Yeah, yeah, send it away. Yeah, that's fine if you want to send it. Uh -huh. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Send it. On your end? I see. You're on schedule three. I know. Me too. Until then. <laughs> Seen you since Shadow Moses. How long? Ten years? I'm Dr. Emmerich. Is he with you? Why? I thought he'd be the only one able to open the mail I sent. Not many people could recognize 4D sound data in a Soliton radar file. How is the good doctor? Otacon's fine. It's the same as ever. Otacon? I see. Who were you just talking to? Liquid. Although I suppose he's really Ocelot, from a medical standpoint. I thought he was here. He's not, at the moment. Where are awesome. the guards? They know I won't escape. I'm powerless to resist. I have no choice but to cooperate. Naomi, what happened in the Middle East? What you saw was the soldiers' emotions run amok. Another product of the system. don't trust me? I'm not sure yet. And if I answer your question? Let's hear it first. Liquid. We thought the SOP was an ID control system designed primarily to maintain order and control in battle. <laughs> and we were right. Only partially. SOP had another function. To control people's senses. The nanomachines inside soldiers' bodies adapt to different conditions, promoting the release of neurotransmitters, hormones, and stimulants, giving them an edge in battle. They can create an artificial combat high by releasing endorphins at the same time a soldier kills an enemy. Or they can suppress hormones to neutralize the soldier's emotions, prevent them from panicking and engaging in friendly fire, or 
needless massacres. It's all controlled by the system's core AI. It artificially controls the soldier's pain, emotion, and senses. In other words, the essence of his being. The skyrocketing demands of the war economy have fueled the demand for more soldiers and more fighting. This in turn led to the development of technologies to rapidly improve their combat abilities and control their actions. The system ensures a steady supply of battle-optimized soldiers at a minimum of cost. But you, of all people, must understand, Snake, that unlike combat technique, a soldier's senses can't be taught. They must be earned through experience. Does this have something to do with that test of yours? The goal was to release the soldiers' okay. machines from the system. But we didn't know about the mental control. And the nanomachines went berserk? No. Our test was a success. At least, confirmed our hypothesis at the time. Just as we predicted, the nanomachines stopped functioning, and the PMC soldiers were freed from the grips of the system. But the moment the system stopped, all the pain and fury and sorrow, all the trauma and stress, all the hatred, regret, guilt, all the sensations that had been suppressed were unleashed within their hearts. Their memories, unlike their senses, weren't erased. Each enemy soldier they killed, each lost comrade, each threat of violence against the innocent, every act of war they committed was etched firmly in their hearts. In suppressing the user's mind, the nanomachines exact a heavy burden on his heart. The user's body rejects the nanomachines. This reaction must then be suppressed with drugs. Before the user knows it, his mind is in complete shambles. Snake. Remember Frank? Frank Yeager. Gray Fox. They twisted his body for their experiments and nullified his broken heart with nanomachines. SOP has taken it even further and applied it to living human beings. The sins of war these soldiers carried inside them returned to assault them in the form of unimaginable shell shock. The meaning in the system may have changed, but the battlefield hasn't. Until that point, war was like a game to them. And then suddenly, reality came crashing down. <coughs> Ordinarily, our hearts are hardened through experience. Even the most grizzled veterans live with an inescapable guilt they've had to overcome bit by bit through the years. And even then, it never truly goes away. For a mind lacking that essential experience, it was simply too much to bear. about me. I've never been under the system's control. That's why I want to examine your body. You need to know too. Dress. Already right here and now. <laughs> Snake, what's gotten into you? Hurry up.
Snake, do you remember what I told you in my video mail? About the first generation of nanomachines? Hmm. The ones you stuck me with at Moses. Yes. The nanomachines are recharged by your body heat. They won't stop functioning until they're all extracted. Or until you do. Most of them were lost through bleeding and excretion, but around 30% still remain inside your body, attached to your cells. The first generation were never ID registered, so they don't react in the same way as the SOP nanomachines. But they may be interfering with your body and with your heart. Hmm. So, does the aging have something to do with Fox Dye, too? No. Your telomeres were intentionally set up to be short, regardless of the age of the original. One of the genes that inhibit reproduction and aging, the Clotho gene, was intentionally mutated as well. But more importantly, your chromosomes, like liquids, were provided with terminator genes to prevent them from making copies. Why? Your clones created for one purpose, war. And so, in order to prevent you from being abused by clients or stolen by the enemy, they shortened your lifespan and removed your ability to reproduce. It was a safety device to ensure that the seed of Big Boss didn't end up in the hands of others. The reason you're aging so rapidly isn't because of disease or faulty research or fox dye. It's how you were born. It's your natural lifespan. Truth, Naomi. How long is my body gonna hold out? Your cells, blood, organs, nerves, skeletal system, muscle tissue. Every part of your body is aging rapidly. An ordinary man wouldn't even be standing by now. Snake, the only thing keeping you together is the strength of your will. How long do I have? Half a year. <sighs> Don't. <sighs> Snake. There's something I have to tell you. Uh, now what? You and I both know your body is approaching its limit. But when I said half a year, I wasn't talking about your lifespan. What do you mean? We can't get rid of the fox dye in your body completely. At this point, it's circulating within you like a normal virus. Yeah, so? Listen to me. Fox dye only kills its victims when the infected person's genetic code fully matches the genetic sequence programmed into the virus's receptors. In other words, it only attacks targets with specific genes. I know. That's what killed the AT president. And liquid. Yes. And at the same time, it's set up to protect those not designated as targets from the virus's harmful effects. Here. I'll show you. The receptors on the fox dye inside your body are breaking down. The rapid aging process is changing the environment within your body. As a result, the virus is starting to mutate. The viruses on the left are fox dye in its original form. The ones on the right I took from your body. They're already mutated. The receptors, they're wearing down. Meaning? This mutated version of fox dye could activate even if the infected person's genetic pattern doesn't perfectly match the receptors. 
Which means the virus is becoming indiscriminate about what type of target it kills. Ever since Shadow Moses, fox dye has been breeding continuously in the nanomachine colony inside your body and dispersing into the air. But there are no more targets to attack, so there haven't been any more outbreaks. However, if the receptors continue to wear down, it'll become a killer virus that attacks untold numbers of victims. What if we kill them all? Remove them from the body. There are no antibodies either. I don't know what percentage of the receptors have to break down, or how many people will be targeted when that happens. But what is certain is that people will begin to catch fox dye through airborne transmission. It'll start with those closest to you. Then, one by one, they'll lose their lives. The part of the virus that distinguishes between individuals will start to break down in about... Half a year. No. Three months at the most. Three months? <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? You've spent your entire life saving the world from Metal Gear. From nuclear annihilation. And now, you're becoming a doomsday device yourself. I can't predict exactly how devastating the epidemic will be. Whether just 1% of the human race could unlock the broken receptors, or whether we all can. In either case, three months from now you'll be a walking biological weapon. If it were up to me, you'd be quarantined already. It's not over yet. I know. You still have a job to do. You have three months. Still enough time to think once all of this is done with. And if I choose death first, will that stop Fox Dye from spreading? When the host dies, the virus dies with it. Snake, tell me one more thing. Have you been to a hospital lately? Yeah. While you were there, did they give you an injection? Don't they always? Take a look at this. These came out of your body as well. It's a new strain of fox dye, one I've never seen. Someone must have put them in you recently. Do you have any idea who? Him. The new fox dye strain is starting to multiply rapidly. What's in it? I can't say for sure. I'll need to do some more tests. Here, take this. It contains the same substance the soldiers' nanomachines secrete inside their bodies. It's a drug that inhibits the nanomachine's ability to regulate the senses. The nanomachines inside the body malfunction when the system interferes with them. It triggers a reaction in the body, which is why you're having the seizures. Give yourself a shot whenever they get bad. It's potent, so use it sparingly, unless you want to end up an invalid. It may restore your psych for a short while, but use it too often and the amount restored will start to decrease.
I've been a fool. I let myself drown in my nanomachines, and now I'm trapped by them. You said yourself we mustn't allow ourselves to be chained to fate. I can't slip free. Then I'll free us both. Where's Liquid? I can't tell you yet. Not until you free me. Do we know? Liquid left here last night. Where was he headed? Those are my terms. I can't leave this place of my own will. What are you talking about? I'm being... watched. Liquid has altered his plan. Removing the system will only cause his army to collapse from within. So he's chosen to seize control instead. Liquid's objective is to hijack the SOP system. He'll use it to create the ultimate army of perfect soldiers and launch his insurrection against the Patriots. There's a name for his new plan. He calls it Guns of the Patriots. Guns of the Patriots? That name. This place isn't safe. Come with us. This way. Snake, you'll have to break through to go after Naomi. Take out those enemy soldiers and clear a path. Driving shop. See what he has. What is that? Oh, okay. Um, I forgot what it was I used last time. To beat it quickly.
work should be about 20 minutes. In about 20 minutes. Okay, I need 
I remember it taking this long to try and freaking kill her. Then again, I think I always used like either the Patriot or um, something else. Tenders near me now. Open should come through the window again. Made my job easy. Up. Ah, bollocks. 
I had a feeling she was gonna come through the window. Okay. Got you first, bitch. And she's out of here. Oh, that's right. I've got to get her, too. The truth is, I'm not laughing. <laughs> not yeah. laughing at all. Seems to me that you are. I, I shouldn't be laughing. I'm scared. I'm really scared. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So sorry I laughed. I'm sorry. I won't laugh anymore. I can't. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> She shed her suit. Who knows what she'll throw at you next? Watch out. Come on. Oh shit, don't get caught. Oh, bollocks. Get off me. Got
how it's done. Oh, that's right, get the face camo thing. Yes, Otacon. Your snake. Oh, he's driven. What do you want? That's cold, man. And here I was about to tell my very best customer about face camo. Face camo? That camo skull cap you just picked up from Tentacle's shell. It utilizes the same kind of technology as your Octo Camo suit. Using the two together can get you even better results. I'd hang on to it if I was you. Doesn't fit. It's not my size or shape. Yeah. Looks like it could use a bit of tailoring before you can sport it. Not my line of work, but... Ain't you got a buddy who specializes in that kind of thing? Hmm. Somebody's done their homework. Hey, it's my job. Is that the real reason you injected me with those nanomachines? To spy on me? I prefer the term customer data management myself. Mm. Trevor, relax. It's strictly confidential. I ain't gonna share it with anybody. Then what did you mix a virus in with the nanomachines for? Virus? A certain virus was detected in my body. Are you saying it wasn't in the nanomachines you injected? Look, you do know there are other folks who could have done this to you. And besides, what would I gain from infecting you? Better for me that you're out there kicking ass on the battlefield. I was watching you, Snake. You're a real piece of work. Never thought I'd meet the man who could take down Laughing Octopus single-handedly. <sighs> she just kept on laughing. Now, why do you suppose that is? <sighs> Something in her past. You got it. She's from a village in Scandinavia. Little seaside hamlet known to all the locals as the Devil's Village. Place wasn't known for devils, though. It was known for octopus. See, this was one of the few places in Europe where they ate octopus customarily. Anyway, there's this cult of crazies who for some reason hate the village with a passion. Then, when she was just a teenager, things get bad. These nutcases get their hands on some weapons and attack the village. Overnight, her sleepy little fishing town becomes a war zone. They round up all the villagers and execute them one by one. Except for that girl. They had something else planned for her. Something a whole lot worse than dying. Calling her the devil's child, they forced her to do the kind of thing you'd expect from one of Lucifer's own. After they made her torture her family and friends, they made her kill him. The whole time they were forcing her to laugh, howl like some sort of demon. Like she was enjoying it. What was she gonna do? Say no? They kill her too. So she let fear take control and did exactly as they told her. She butchered the bodies of the ones she loved and laughed while she did it. And as she bathed in their blood, it gradually turned from deep red to jet black. To her, it looked like the ink of an octopus. The experience scarred her deep. Ever since then, she hasn't stopped laughing. Only... That ain't really laughed. Why are you telling me this? You expect me to feel sorry for her? Nah. 
I know you got no room for that stuff in your world. And besides, this is war. Right? In a way, though, I guess it was the right thing to do. What was? Fighting you cleansed her mind. All right, enough chit-chat. There's other beasts out there in them woods. Watch your back. Snake, have you lost sight of the target? Whenever something moves, it leaves a trail behind. Track and find Naomi's trail. I'm not like Big Boss. Tracking isn't my strongest suit. When did you get so good at it? After saving Sunny, I drifted around the globe. In Alaska, a tribal elder taught me some scouting techniques. Drifted? You never went back to see Rose? Rose? She doesn't exist. No. Rose and I live in different worlds, different times. Her world has no place for someone like me. My place is here on the battlefield. Huh. Listen, Snake. Scouting is based on the principles of hunting. There are two fundamentals. Awareness and tracking. Awareness? Awareness refers to locating a trail by paying careful attention to your surroundings. Tracking means to follow that trail. Your target's trail could be footprints, a branch they broke along the way, bent grass trampled underfoot. You need to feel for clues using all your senses. Sound, smell, touch, the direction of the wind. Watch how the animals move. Listen for unusual bird calls. These are signs that someone may be disrupting the environment nearby. You sound like a ninja. Exactly. Ninja are the ultimate scouts. If your enemy is a skilled scout, they'll be doing the same thing. You may be the hunter, but you are also the hunted. To avoid enemy detection, move slowly, little by little. Don't disturb the air around you. Try to make as little noise as possible. Your pursuers will be doing the same, trying to sneak up on you without a sound. If you can't pick up the trail with your naked eye, Switch the solid eye to infrared mode. That will enable you to see Naomi's footprints and any enemies lying in ambush. Switch the solid eye to infrared. Got it. But the sound it makes while engaged could end up giving your position away. So don't leave it on for too long. All right. Listen to your heart. Trust your senses as much as you can. And you will find Naomi's trail. I'll give it a shot. Snake, follow Naomi's trail and find out where they took her. Watch out, though. You might run into a few holdups along the way. <laughs> 